I've been to so many memorials for Mickey and Buddy and people that my aunt has loved. And every time I go with her, she speaks. Um, so, you know, we came and to get up to speak, and uh, every single time she brings them to like the verge of tears about their best loved friend, and then we all roll in laughter. And I say, it's really too bad that you're gonna die before you can speak at my eulogy. <laughs> Gosh darn, cause that's how I wanna be remembered in your eyes. So thanks, Aunt Anna, for getting to say nice things about me before I'm dead. <laughs> Scottish play. We're not in the theater. 
theater, but that one. And we did it a few times and then took it to Washington, D.C. Uh, as part of the Shakespeare Festival, the National Museum of the American Indian. And I got to be in world premieres of new plays like Raven Odyssey that um, Ishmael, my husband, and uh, Agent Pasarelli During this time, I began sharing indigenous stories from my Tlingit heritage, from my grandmother's memories. Thank you, Irene Bowling Sarabia Lampi, for grounding me in my culture. Um, my first art love is theater and storytelling. And mostly, the joy of co-creating together and the work that we get to do in the theater world of of not feeling so alone and being part of this thing bigger than ourselves that is lasting for those people to witness. Right, like Donnie was saying, that we're, as my mother would have said, we never ever create alone. Water break, hold on. <clears throat> this grounding in creating stories together helped to enforce the best parts of myself. My, he's here too. My grandfather, my father's father was like 90 something when he stopped substitute teaching in Oakland, California. He wore a bow tie, but he was an English teacher and a drama teacher. And uh, long ago, uh, uh, you know, they had those reunion things where the reunions would come about and he's like 92 wearing a bow tie and Mr. Hudson and all this. And um, a, a student came up to him, and he told this to me before he passed. He said, this one student came up to me, and he said, you know, Mr. Hudson, I took all your drama throughout my high school years, took all the classes, and I wasn't, I didn't just learn drama from you. I feel like I learned how to be a better human being from my drama, from the work that we did together. So that, theater and creating stories together, enforcing the better parts of myself, the parts that allow other people to be who they are <coughs> on and off the stage, to share their unique gifts, and to recognize that when one of us begins to rise, we can, we can all rise together. stories are so tightly entwined if we allow them, if we allow them. My work now as a Chilkat and Raven's Tale weaver and teacher is a continuation of this work, encouraging others to explore worthiness and identity, embracing shortcomings or self-doubt, which is a surprisingly significant part of learning, practicing, and teaching Chilkat weaving and theater. It is in those daily prayers of gratitude prior to sitting at the loom that we can shed any unworthiness, any of our unworthiness, to sit in that calm of being and creating. From this place of gratitude, we create. Sometimes in silence, Sometimes three or four of us in the studio laughing and weaving together till we're crying and laughing. Sometimes in public with hundreds of tourists asking us those same questions. How far are we from sea level? <laughs> How long did that take you to weave so far? What's that made of? Do you take American dollars? <laughs> Whether we are alone or surrounded by other people in our creation, we weavers are storytellers and record keepers. Weaving the stories of today, sometimes our lives woven into these dancing ceremonial robes that take us up to two years to complete. We are careful in our process to leave all anger, grief, and heaviness out of our woven work, which means we are doing the inner work, aware of our own traumas, striving to be more present, more kind, more accepting. Like that movie, 
like water for chocolate. Remember that? Remember that female chef? Maybe she wasn't really a chef, but she was cooking. <laughs> that female chef, the energy that she was imbuing into that food, that energy we imbue into our woven work is felt by the dancers of our robes the first time and even hundreds of years later. But it's not just in our woven work that we're careful with the energies we bring. It is with our significant others. With our aunties, our mothers, our closest friends, our children. This is our work, our good work here as human beings to practice that gratitude, that kindness, that allowance for others' shortcomings and ancestral traumas to hopefully come together in co-creation through theater, through art, through simply being together. That each of us, in our own way, can do our part to let go of the traumas, to embrace our own worthiness, our collective worthiness, and to help each other rise. I hope, I hope to God I'm leaving a legacy worth speaking about for my students, my son, and my four daughters. Thank you again for this honor. <laughs>